Most people are grinding to become data analysts without realizing that title is about to trap them in a career dead end. Some data analyst career paths will have you stuck at 50K working in spreadsheets for the rest of your life, while others will fast track you in 150K roles in under three to four years doing strategic, high impact work that companies are desperate to fill. But here's the problem. No one's telling you which paths are which. So you're out here taking the same courses, building the same projects, getting the same degrees, and applying to the same generic analyst roles and wondering why you're either getting ghosted or landing offers that barely cover the rent. Well, today I'm going to break down and rank some of the common data analyst career paths. I'm talking from low tier dead ends all the way to S tier roles that will have recruiters fighting over you. Now, if this is your first time here, I'm Kadisha, and five years ago, I was delivering pizzas and Amazon packets for $8 an hour. And today I'm running a community of over 60,000 current and aspiring data professionals. I've helped thousands of other career changers break into data analytics with out going back to school and wasting money and time on courses that just don't work. I have watched this career field transform in real time and my only goal is to help you cut through the noise of endless information online to get you to where you want to be in the least amount of time. All right, so let's dive in. Let's start at the bottom with the roles that you need to avoid like the plague. And look, I'm not saying this to be mean. I am saying this because I've seen far too many talented people waste their years in these positions and wonder why their careers aren't moving forward fast enough. Enough. So first off, the social media data analyst. Now I know this sounds trendy and fun. I'll analyze Instagram engagement and TikTok trends. I'll work with influencers and content creators, but here's a harsh reality. This role is severely underpaid and undervalued in most organizations. Most career media analyst positions pay around 66K, which is way below what other analyst roles offer. And here's why. The role is usually confined to platform specific dashboards. You're tracking likes, comments, shares, follower growth, very surface level value metrics that don't always directly tie to revenue. And sure, you might occasionally prove that a campaign might drive some sales, but most of the time you're just reporting on some rates that executives don't even care about. They care about revenue. They care about customer acquisition costs. They care about lifetime value. And social media metrics, they're often just three steps removed from these numbers. Plus, your job security is tied to whatever platform is hot right now. Remember when everyone thought Vine was the future or when Facebook was the only social platform that mattered? The landscape shifts constantly and your specialized knowledge can become obsolete overnight. The tools that you use are basic, mostly native platform analytics and maybe some light Excel work, but you're not building complex SQL queries. You're not creating sophisticated data models. You're essentially a glorified social media manager with a data title slapped on it. And here's the kicker. When companies want to cut costs, marketing analytics, especially social media, is one of the first to go. Why? Because it's very hard to prove direct ROI and executives see it as a nice to have rather rather than a must have. So I'm gonna give this an opportunity score of three out of 10. Only consider this if you're already deep in social media marketing and you wanna just add some data skills on top of your skill set. Otherwise, skip it and aim way higher. Next up is the academic or institutional data analyst. This is a role you'll find at universities, school districts, and government agencies. You'll be tracking enrollment numbers, analyze student performance data, creating compliance reports for state and federal agencies, and supporting institutional research. The good news, the work-life balance Balance is pretty good. And if you're brand new to data with zero experience, these organizations are often willing to take a chance on you. Now the bad news, pretty much everything else. Public sector and academic roles are often notorious for low pay, usually around 60 to 75K, even with a bunch of years of experience. The raises are very minimal and the career progression is painfully slow. You're dealing with outdated systems. I'm talking about databases from the 90s that no one even knows how to update. You're navigating bureaucratic red tape where getting approval for new software tools can take six months and three committee meetings and the decision making processes move at a snail's pace because everyone has to go through five layers of administration and here's what happens you get comfortable the job is easy the pressure is low and you show up do your work and go home now that sounds great until you realize five years have passed and your skills have stagnated i work with several people who have come from academic institutions and they all say the same thing i got too comfortable and it hurt my career when they finally try to transition to the private sector they struggle mightily because they hadn't kept up with the modern tools, the modern workflows, and the modern business problems. I'm giving this an opportunity score of 4 out of 10. Good for beginners who need that first data analyst tile on the resume, but make sure you have an exit plan and don't stay longer than two years max. All right, so quick pause. If you're finding value in this video and you're serious about landing your first data analyst role or leveling up your current one, I've got something for you. I put together a free training that walks you through the exact step-by-step -step system that I use to help people break into data 
data analytics without going back to school in under six months. You can access that training by clicking the link in the pinned comment or in the description. It's completely free and we can walk you through exactly what you need, get you the right skills, the right experience in the right time. All right, now let's keep going. Okay, so now we're getting into the roles that actually matter. These are going to be legitimate career paths that can actually lead you to six figures if you play your cards right. But they're also getting kind of crowded, which means you're going to have to differentiate yourself. All right, next up, the data scientist. So here's a role that gets a lot of hype and honestly, it deserves some of it. But let me be real with you. This isn't the golden ticket everyone makes it out to be, especially not in 2025. Data scientists build predictive models, run statistical analysis, and use machine learning to solve complex business problems. You're forecasting customer churn, building recommendation systems, optimizing pricing strategies, and creating algorithms that automate decision making. The pay is very solid. Entry-level roles can start at 95K to 110K. Mid-level positions hit at 120K to 140K and senior data scientists can command anywhere from 150K plus. But why isn't this higher on the list? Because here's the reality. The barrier to entry is getting higher while the practical demand is getting more specific. Most companies don't need anyone building neural networks from scratch. They need people who can use pre-built models, integrate AI tools, and translate outputs into business decisions. Plus, this field is getting crowded with people who have master's degrees and PhDs. If you are coming from a non-traditional background, you are competing against candidates with way more formal education and honestly a lot of data science roles just end up being mostly data cleaning and very little actual modeling which means you're just doing data analyst work with the scientist title but here is where this role shines if you love statistics if you are generally interested in machine learning and if you want to work on complex problems that often require advanced modeling this is your path you need very strong python or r skills deep understanding of statistics and probability machine learning frameworks like scikit-learn and tensorflow and the ability ability to communicate complex concepts simply. The demand is still there, especially in tech and finance, but it's not the wide open opportunity it was five years ago or in the pandemic. You need to be strategic about it. I'm giving this an opportunity score of 7 out of 10, still valuable and well paid, but increasingly competitive and often requires advanced degrees to break in. All right, next up, the marketing data analyst. If you love creativity mixed with numbers, this is your lane. The marketing data analyst works with growth teams to optimize campaigns, analyze customer funnels, maximize ROI, and figure out which marketing channels actually drive revenue. You're running A-B tests on landing pages, email campaigns, and ad copy. You're segmenting customers to personalized messaging. You're tracking conversion rates across the entire funnel from awareness to purchase. You're calculating customer lifetime value to determine how much the company should spend to acquire each customer. This role is perfect if you want to see the direct impact of your work. When you identify that LinkedIn ads are driving 3x better conversions than Facebook for B2B customers, and then the company shifts budget accordingly, you see your results immediately. The pay is very competitive. Entry level can start around 68K, mid level hitting around 85K, and senior roles can hit about 97K plus. And as marketing becomes more data driven, the demand for analysts who can connect marketing spend to revenue is skyrocketing. Marketing leaders are also under constant pressure to prove ROI. They need analysts who could actually show which campaign are working and which ones are burning money. If you can do that, you become indispensable. Plus, this role teaches you skills that transfer everywhere. Understanding customer acquisition, conversion optimization, and growth metrics, these skills are valuable in product, sales, and operations, basically every part of the business. The challenge is that you need to be comfortable with ambiguity. Marketing data is very messy. Attribution is complicated, and you're often working with incomplete data and having to make recommendations anyway. If you can handle that, the role offers very high high impact and very high visibility. I'm giving this an opportunity score of 8 out of 10, very high impact, very high visibility, and high demand, and a clear path to six figures. Okay, so now we're going to get into roles that where you have the real leverage. These positions put you into rooms where decisions get made, and you're not just reporting what happened, you are shaping what happens next. So next up, the product manager. Now here's where things get interesting. Product manager isn't technically a data analyst role, but it's one of the more lucrative paths for people with strong strong analytical skills. And honestly, it's one of the smartest pivots you can make from analytics. Product managers own the product vision and strategy. You are deciding what features to build, prioritize and roadmap, working with engineering and design teams, 
and ultimately being responsible for whether the product succeeds or fails in the market. And here's the key. The best product managers are data driven. They use analytics to understand user behavior, validate hypotheses, measure success, and make strategic decisions. If you can combine analytical thinking with business strategy and communication skills, you become incredibly valuable. The pay also reflects the value. Entry-level product managers can start anywhere between 90 to 110K. Mid-level PMs can hit 120K to 150K, and senior PMs at major tech companies are talking 180 to 250K plus, especially when you include stock and bonuses. But here's what makes this path so powerful. It's a natural progression from a product data analyst. You've already worked with the product teams, you already understand user behavior, and you're already influencing decisions. The jump to PM is about taking ownership of those decisions rather than just informing them. The skills you need go beyond just data. You need to bring strong communication and stakeholder management, strategic thinking and prioritization, and understanding of the product development processes, and the ability to balance user needs and business goals. Now, I'm not going to lie, this role is very competitive. Everyone wants to be a PM because the pay is great and you have real influence. It is a very popular job for MBA graduates. But if you come from a data background, you have massive leverage. Most PMs struggle with data. They can't easily run their own analysis and they can't interpret A-B tests so easily or they can't easily build a business case with numbers. But you as a data analyst can and that's what makes you dangerous in the best possible way. I'm giving this an opportunity score of 8 out of 10. Very high pay, very high impact and a clarifying path to executive leadership perfect for analysts who want to go beyond just analyzing and start driving strategy. Okay, so next up, the data engineer. So this is where things get serious. Data engineers are the architects in the data world. While analysts use data and scientists model it, engineers build the infrastructure that makes it all possible. You're designing and building data pipelines that move data from source systems into warehouses. You're optimizing databases for performance and scale, and you're ensuring the data quality and reliability across the entire organization. Your work with tools like Apache Spark, Airflow, Kafka, and cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, and GCP. Here's what makes this role top tier. Every company that's serious about data needs engineers. You can't do analytics without data infrastructure. You can't build ML models without clean, accessible data. Data engineers are the foundation of the entire data ecosystem, which makes them absolutely critical and the pay reflects that importance. Entry-level data engineers can start around 95 to 110K. Mid-level roles start at 120K to 140K, and senior data engineers, we're talking 150K plus, especially at really big tech companies. But here's what makes this role even more valuable. It's future-proof. As AI automates more basic tasks, the need for people to build and maintain data infrastructure only grows. You're not competing with automation, you're building the systems that automation runs on. And the challenge here, the role is more technical than traditional analyst positions. You need strong programming skills in Python or other tools like Scala, understanding of distributed systems, understanding of cloud architecture, knowledge of database design and optimization, and experience with data pipeline tools such as Airflow or DBT. But here's the good news. You don't need a computer science degree. I've seen people transition from regular data analyst roles into data engineering by focusing on SQL mastery, learning Python for data pipelines, and building projects that demonstrate that they can architect scalable systems. I'm giving this an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. Very high pay, very high demand, and future-proof, and offers a clear path to senior engineering leadership. Perfect for analysts who love the technical side and want to build systems at scale. Okay, so now we're going to be at the S tier, and this is a role that combines everything that you want. High pay, high demand, high impact, and honestly, less competition when you think about it because most people don't realize it exists. So I'm talking about the analytics engineer. This is it. This is the crown jewel of data analyst careers. And most people have never even heard of this role, which is exactly why there's a massive opportunity for it. Analytics engineers are the intersection of data engineering and data analysis. You're not just analyzing data, you're building end-to-end -end projects. You use SQL or tools like DPT to transform raw data into clean, reliable, well-documented data models. You're creating data pipelines that run automatically, and you're implementing data quality tests to catch errors. You're documenting everything so other analysts can understand 
understand your work. You create a dashboard to present insights and reports to stakeholders. Now, here's why this is top tier. You're a force multiplier. Instead of just making dashboards, you're also helping build the foundation that allows for dozens or hundreds of other people to do analysis. This role is perfect for smaller companies that can't really afford massive data teams. This makes you incredibly valuable to startups and mid-sized companies that are scaling fast but need to stay lean. And you become the entire data function, which means more responsibility, more visibility, and often equity on top of your salary. Most companies know this is valuable, which is why they're paying top dollar. Average salary, 109 to 130K. The top earners can be getting over 170K. But we're talking about roles that don't require a PhD or 10 years of experience. Most analytics engineers have just two to three years of experience in data analytics. The demand is also exploding. As more companies adopt the modern data stack, they desperately need people who can implement and manage these systems. And there just aren't enough qualified people to fill these roles. That's the opportunity. The bar is high, but it's not impossibly high. You don't need machine learning. You don't need a computer science degree. I'm giving this an opportunity score of 10 out of 10. This is the future of data careers. High pay, high demand, high impact, and honestly, way less competition than the traditional data analyst role. So there you have it, the ranking of some of the most popular data analyst career paths from worst to best. And if you're serious about making a transition and want personalized help in figuring out which path you should take, click the first link in the description and book a free career strategy call so you can talk with my team and we'll figure out which path is best for you. If this helped you, hit the like button, drop a comment, letting me know which path you're going to be targeting and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you in the next one.